Hi, Keith and Caleb, and we're back at Rock Island Auction House with some more cool guns from the vault. Caleb, what have we got? Here we have probably one of the best and coolest examples of any Browning automatic rifle I've ever seen. This one's actually a 1918 World War I. So when people think BAR, generally, you know, they, they picture the famed BAR from yeah. World War II. Uh, this is actually back where it all started. This is before it has the bipod uh, and a couple of other, you know, minor changes here and there. But this one was actually made for a completely different mm. purpose than the World War II BARs. The World War II BAR is more of like your squad support type weapon. Yep. Um, the first like squad automatic weapon, if you will. Uh, but this one goes back to the original concept of why it was born, and that was basically the walking fire Absolutely. type tactic, you know, warfare. Um, so, kind of what that entails is that, you know, there's no bipod on this. This is actually meant to be fired from the hip to start with, and then you can pull it up to your shoulder, switch it to full auto whenever you get close to the enemy trenches and just spray into them. And uh, there's actually a cool kind of belt rig that goes mm -hmm. with this thing, holds your ammo, has a pocket in there so you can tuck the stock tuck into it. Yep. And the idea was that, you know, you have a whole group of guys all armed with BARs on semi-auto as they're approaching the enemy trench. Just on semi-auto, just keeping the enemy's head down. And then when you get close to the trench, you can flip it over to full, throw it up on your shoulder and finish the Light job. Light them up. Finish the job. So if you look at the selector lever, it actually kind of tells a little bit of a story of how it's meant to be used. So if you look on the side here, you'll notice that first you have your semi-auto position. Then from there, it flips back to full auto. And then there's a safety. Um, and to get it into safe, you kind of have to push a detent and want to get it into safe. Uh, that was so that, you know, in the heat of the moment, you didn't just flip it all the way back instead of going to full auto end up on safe because that would be a pretty bad situation. <laughs> but all in all, a really cool concept. You know, John Moses Browning, this is, you know, yeah, I mean, this is the one. This is one he could have had a hold of right here. Yeah, I he mean, very well could have hit, could have had his hands on this exact yeah. one because it's old enough. Yeah, and, and you see the picture of the original BAR with Val Browning. Yeah. Uh, John's son has that tucked into that rig and he's holding that out how it was meant to be and yeah this is that's super cool just thinking that, that they may have had hands on this yeah and I mean that's awesome so even though that was the original purpose of it it never really got to be used that way it's kind right. of unfortunate uh, it was limited there were squads trained with these and then deployed with these but as soon as they got over to France they were taken away from them uh, and that's actually for a good reason. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate, but there's, there's a, a good reason behind it. So there weren't enough of them over uh, deployed with to make a huge impact. And anytime you, you basically deploy a new tactic onto the battlefield, uh, you end up with, of course, your enemy developing a counter to that tactic. And this is one of those scenarios where they did not want the opportunity uh, for the enemy to make a counter to that tactic. They wanted to deploy, be able to deploy with enough of these so it was like shock and awe on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. They wanted these to hit hard and just basically dominate. Um, so those few very small units that deployed with these, they took them away from them because they didn't want them to use them and then give the enemy time to develop a counter tactic as they got more in and then they wouldn't be as effective. Uh, which makes perfect sense from a, a strategic standpoint, uh, but it is a bit unfortunate. Yeah, it would have been cool to see in these really being deployed on the battlefield and, and going into the trenches and just see how effective they really would have been. Oh man, it would have been insane. Yeah. So yeah, obviously, you know, just looking at the gun, it's it's obviously like, it's not meant to be, you know, fired from a prone supported no. position like the later models were. Uh, shorter stock, mm -hmm. you know, not, not a very large profile pistol grip on there. Uh, it's meant to be manhandled. Yeah. And just swung around and just be, be the gun that dominates the battlefield. You were meant to spray with this thing. Even though it's it's a really heavy gun, uh, take our word for it, it's, it's a big chunk of steel. Um, but with that, you know, it actually absorbed quite a bit of that recoil from a 30-06 cartridge. So They did, it was very effective on 30-06 and had a adjustable rate of fire mm -hmm. on there. And later on after the war, they really become notable uh, with use with Bonnie and Clyde oh, and yeah. law enforcement. I mean, Clyde Barrow had a couple of these and had the barrel chopped down and 
and had the stock chopped and they were just awesome laying down fire. I mean, there was one time whenever uh, Clyde Barrow was coming down out of a, a down the stairs and Bonnie was there and she saw the law enforcement in behind in around a tree and she said, turn it on Clyde and he laid down with a BAR, I mean, just shredding everything around them. I mean, they were just you know, from the military to law enforcement to, to outlaws using them. They were a pretty, pretty effective means of laying down suppressive fire. It was a very effective tool and anyone who used its hands. Yeah. So that is the 1918 BAR. Well, folks, there you go. There's another absolutely cool gun from the vault, and we'd like to thank Rock Island for having us out again to take a look at all this cool stuff. Now, while you're at it, be sure to smash that like and subscribe button and drop us a comment. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune in again whenever we bring another gun from, from the, the vault. vault.